All right, welcome back everyone to our YouTube channel. Um, again, my name is Dr. Jason Schumard, where I'll be bringing you on a weekly basis detailed specific information regarding type 2 diabetes and the impacts it has on your life. And this week we're going to be specifically discussing diabetic complications. Now, why is this so important? Because I believe that knowledge is power. And the more you know about your type 2 diabetes and the risks you have in the future, is gonna set you up for success. Because here's the thing, many individuals that I talk to on a daily basis, their belief is these are not going to happen to them. And why are they being told this? Because their doctor is telling them that everything is fine, everything is good, meaning their blood sugars are being managed. Their A1C, for those of you who are familiar with the A1C, just to give you some detailed information, the A1C is a marker we can identify on blood work that indicates the relative risk factors of where your diabetes is. It's a 90 day average of how well your blood sugars are being managed either on its own with your own body or how the medication is currently helping you in regards to managing your sugars. But here's what I want you to understand is that many of you are being told that your A1C is in a good managed place. So just to go over some numbers real quickly to make sure we're really well informed, your A1C, or also referred to as your hemoglobin A1C, is a very important marker that you should be evaluating on a regular basis. So a 5.2 to 5.6 is considered a non-diabetic. That means you're no risk of diabetes at all, your blood sugars are being managed, your body's doing a good job. Between a 5.7 and 6.4 is considered pre-diabetes, again, Pre-diabetes, as a reminder, this is an indication that things are worsening, things are increasing, and the progression is already happening. Anything above a 6.5 is considered a diagnosis for type 2 diabetes, but anything that's above a 7 is indicating that your type 2 diabetes is out of control, that things are progressing and your risks for complications are increasing. Now, here's the scary thing about diabetes. Because in many cases, actually I'm gonna give you two scary scenarios. The first one is that many of you are being told right now that when your A1C is below a seven, that everything is fine, that your diabetes is being managed and everything is in a good place. But here's the reality, that is not true. The only time that you're out of that bad situation or progressiveness to create the risk of complications is when your A1C is below a 5.7 and you are off medications. That's the only time. Because if you're in a scenario right now and your A1C is at a 5.5, but you're taking two medications, that's not a good thing. Because what is happening? The medications are driving your sugars down to make it appear that things are better on paper. So we have to truly understand your risk factors of these complications occurring. The second scary part about diabetes is that many individuals who have type two diabetes feel fine. They don't feel like they have any issues going on. The problem is, is that in some cases, diabetes can be a progressiveness, meaning that the symptoms are progressive, but in many cases, probably a majority of them, they're not progressive, they're instantaneous. Meaning that you feel fine one day and then boom, the next day that emergency situation occurs and now you're in that emergency scenario dealing with your doctors, trying to get you out of that situation. So I want you to be prepped and ready and educated on what you can do and the things that need to be done to prevent these complications from occurring. Because if you're watching this video right now and you're telling yourself, yeah, I've got diabetes, but I feel fine, I'm healthy, etc." How can you be healthy with a diagnosis of diabetes? Think about that. It's not possible. You may be feeling fine. You don't feel the impacts of it, but the reality is diabetes is a freight train and one day you are going to experience them unless you take the information and prevent that for yourself. But let's, let's focus today on some of the specific key um, complications that are associated with diabetes. The number one complication we know is cardiovascular disease because the statistics tell us that roughly 66% of diabetics are going to have a heart attack or stroke at one time in their life. Now here's what's important to understand is that most people think, well, you know, 
what is the risk factors of that happening to me, right? I feel fine, everything else. It's very, very high and very, very problematic. And we know statistically speaking that 50% of type two diabetics, or sorry, 50% of individuals who have a heart attack will die. It's a 50-50 chance of you dying on your first heart attack. So we then go one step further. What are the initial symptoms of a heart attack? And somebody would say, well, maybe some chest pain, rapid heart rate, you know, maybe neck pain, those sort of things. Well, guess what? Those are not symptoms of the heart attack. That's the actual heart attack actually happening. So the reality is even if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, those may increase the risk of those developing, but even if you were to take medications to lower your blood pressure or cholesterol, doesn't mean you're gonna lower the risk of this happening still. This is still at a very high risk factor. It's the number one cause of death of a type two diabetics. The second one we commonly see is chronic kidney disease. Diabetes, type two diabetes is the number one cause of chronic kidney disease, number one. And so what happens many times is when you are evaluating the kidneys, there are key markers you can evaluate on your blood test. One of those markers I want you to pay attention to is called GFR. That stands for glomerular filtration rate. This is an indication of how well your kidneys are filtering, right? The main focus of our kidneys is they're a filter. If your kidneys are not filtering properly, something else has to filter it for you, and that's called dialysis. So we know there are five stages of kidney disease. The first stage is where you're, this number right here, GFR, goes below 85. So when this goes below 85, you are at risk and your kidneys are now considered stage two. You're in stage two. So go back and look at one of your last um, blood tests and identify where was this GFR? Was it above 85 or was it below 85? If it was below 85, your kidneys are already starting to become a problem. Now, traditionally in the medical model, they don't start even indicating any problems until you go below a 60. So below 60 is stage three. Now beyond that, there's two additional stages in stage three, but it, it's not until like you get into the 20s where you get into that stage four and then below 15 is stage five. Stage five is dialysis. So I want you to really go back and focus on this marker right here and identifying your blood test. Was it below 85? If it is, your kidneys are already failing, even though you may have just been recently diagnosed because the diagnosis of diabetes is irrelevant to the complications. Why is that? Because it can take anywhere between 10 and 20 plus years before you finally get diagnosed with diabetes. So if this underlying problem of your diabetic condition has been going on for 20 years, what's to say it couldn't have been affecting your kidneys well before you're even diagnosed with the elevated sugars? We'll go deeper into that on a separate video. So let's pay attention where I'm at right here. So now if you're below 60 on the GFR, well, that's an indication that your kidneys are very sick now. Now they move to stage three and they will continue to get worse. Now, even more interesting is even though your doctor may indicate, yeah, you're in stage three at this phase, there's nothing they can do for you. So the diagnosis is let's wait and see. Wait and see how your body responds. So then this goes below 50 goes below 40, goes below 30, gets into the 20s, and now they start saying, well, you're now in stage four kidney disease. We gotta start really keeping an eye on this, and when you get into the 18s, now you're getting prepped for dialysis. So this is the number two cause of death and complications of diabetes is the GFR. Cardiovascular, I'm also gonna include in this one as well, which is stroke. We can see here with stroke right there. Let's blow that up a little more for you guys. So you can see that a little better. Whoops. There we go. So we have the stroke situation. That's the number that's correlated as well with the cardiovascular. I'm leaving that the same as the same with you for you guys. These other ones in here that we have, another one I want to focus on here is neuropathy. Neuropathy is a big one because what I want you to understand for most individuals who have neuropathy, the initial stage is numbness and tingling. They're thinking it's not a big deal. But the reality is, what's the worst thing that can happen when you have neuropathy over time? Amputations. And I've asked many individuals in my practice, what's, what was the first symptom you experienced well before you had the amputation? And guess what they all said? Numbness and tingling. Because remember, diabetes is a progressive disease. 
As this progresses, you get worse with time and things get worse as well. The rest of these are all common other symptoms as well. Let's get rid of these things so we can get rid of them. The other things that are on here are, are, are also significant problems, but the reality is these are complications of diabetes, but they're not gonna be a risk factor for an early death. These top three, the neuropathy, the chronic kidney disease, and also the cardiovascular disease, those are the ones you need to be really focused on. And there's a lot of problems that are associated with diabetes. So the, the big picture is this, is don't wait for these to happen. Don't wait for them to get worse. You have to take actions now to understand what's truly causing your diabetes to focus on the cause to prevent these from happening. And if you stick with me and you continue watching my videos on a regular basis, you're gonna truly understand how to find the cause, how to fix the cause, and address the cause so these don't happen in the future. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care.